Caddis Maximus here. We have the Viver 10.1 inch digital microscope here. They did send this as a free promotional product to make a YouTube video about. I don't receive any other compensation. I like to periodically mention that because I take these items be mainly because I can't afford them or they're not, you know, not something I normally bought unless somebody said, hey, you want to try one out for free? Well, why not? I think these things are kind of neat and actually are much more handy, but part of the reason I've also held off, and actually this thing is on, if, maybe if I got a bit better focus, pretty fast video response. Look at that. It, it seems like these electronics, especially made after 2020, uh, generally work a lot better than they used to. Uh, that's the easiest way to say it. Because these things are kind of decent. And I've been waiting off until I could get a hold of one of these with a bigger screen. That's one of the biggest deals is having a pretty big screen. So we have a, let me get a little bit more zoom in here so we can just demonstrate this and then I'll talk about the product. They're advertising 1300 times zoom, but that's a maximum with digital. There we go. You can just start to see the pattern there. This screen it has a reasonable level of brightness. It's actually 10 inches, so it's kind of funky. Plus, it's raised all the way up, and that's part of what I'm pointing out. Maximum with digital is 1,300 times. I think it has, kind of hard to find, like a four to 600 times optical, and then you do have a digital zoom. And overall, it works pretty well. This is actually... It, a 1024 by 600 so known as a 600 p screen but it records in far higher resolution than that so that would be two times zoom and then this is three times zoom but one thing it appears that a lot of people have kind of forgotten about a lot of laboratory microscopes have a such an extremely narrow range of focus they can only focus on something that's like right next to the lens and that's a big advantage to these is just because they have a little bit more height that they can have a much longer lens unit in one of these and it has a massive focal range as we can see I'm about four inches away from my little target here and we can lower this all the way down and of course it will lose focus because I've moved it I'm moving it to the very bottom to where it's absolute closest and what I like about this thing, whoop, I'm going the wrong way there. I'm supposed to have an IPS screen. Oh, I don't, <laughs> I should probably put on a side note. Everything that you've been viewing so far has been without any of the backlights. This is just the light that it's able to pick up from the, my table lights for doing these videos. So now we can see that that test pattern is using up a much bigger section of the screen. That's where a lot of the zoom comes from. And then we can get into the digital zoom. And so overall, it's not too bad. These things are much more modern. Now we can really figure out or see this pattern here. It is one-tenth of a millimeter. That is the size of those squares. So 10 of these little squares is one millimeter. So it came with this little kind of test set up here. Now, of course, when you're this close, your full school range diminishes, but as you pull far away, your focal range increases. So, and that's a couple of the things about being built post 2020 is like the image sensor. It's like they're just using these mad, these super mass produced uh, cell phone camera sensors because uh, they're super cheap and they're actually pretty high quality, especially for the devices like this. So you get things like. Um, you know this must be 30 frames a second so just plenty of response time really good low light we have two different actually I'll I should probably illuminate something different we'll illuminate exactly this which is a piece of very fluffy toilet paper and we have two different sets of lights here we have an ambient light which isn't particularly bright but it's more of a just a diffuse flood so that you can well let me zoom in. Maybe you can see the screen. It's always difficult to <laughs> record a screen. Never gets the contrast right, but you can actually see a lot of the individual fibers. 
where if we turn on the ring light, which is much more intense, as you can see there, certain applications you want the intense ring light that's built into the bottom of the lens. But a lot of times it's just too much and it's being directly on top causes too much reflection. So they do have a couple different sets of lights. And in something like this, like a paper product, which is semi-translucent, uh, it really works a lot better. So I'll, I'll try interjecting. So it surprisingly enough, because of these more fresh upgraded sensors and, and bit better image processors, a lot of the manuals are kind of like, they just haven't updated them. Well, it has been updated for the 10.1 inch, but they just, there's, you know, inevitably communication problems. The manual says only does 1080p, except for when we go into the menu and we can see right there um, that if we go to movie resolution, we actually have 1440p, which is great. It just, and the photo resolution is up to 48 megapixels, which is quite a bit for a digital microscope. As we can see, it has a built-in battery. It lasts a couple of hours, which just makes it convenient. Otherwise, you just plug it in the USB-C. It has an option to actually... It uses a, a micro HDMI, but you can plug this into a monitor or a... Is that even going in proper? You can plug this into a monitor or a video capture card or, you know, like the TV, which is kind of convenient, kind of like that aspect also has a remote control but sometimes it's shaking around and it just has a re uh, a repeat of the same buttons that you have on the front control panel except for this actually has seven it has a back button where the front control panel doesn't but once again 1440p video 48 megapixel photos let me get something in there that's a little bit more high high contrast and maybe a little bit more of an example is this is just a pin a sewing pin and we'll get that under there makes it easier to position and work with stuff when you early versions of these one had not they were microscopes but they just had really low resolution sensors they had really low res screens this the detail is just so much better And I'll zoom that in all the way. It's funny how small it looks like on the camera, even zoomed in. Whoop. Come on. I'm zoomed in a lot. So that is the head of a needle. What's interesting enough is the needle looks totally shiny and smooth. But we can actually see that there is just a bunch of little pitting and pock marks all in the steel. And what is a all intents and purposes a razor sharp tip is just a really small tip but still slightly blunt at the end even though this needle is super duper sharp I'm now realizing maybe it's better if I turn off the the backwards or the back lights we'll try a coin here a dime kinda hard to manipulate um, here we go we'll try it like this so these are the backlights that's how much it will show even with my desk lights off this is just a few lamps on uh, in the living room still pretty impressed you know you wouldn't expect low light performance to be good but it, it shows dynamic range of the sensor which does give better image quality. Um, but it's still surprising, you just never expect it. Most microscopes, you need a ton of light to see anything. So this is the ambient light. But on certain things, like coins, the ring light is just offers a lot more contrast. And we can see that, you can see a bit of the pattern from recording the screen, and this is not zoomed. And then we'll just go up to it gets a little... The thing about the 3.0 zoom is you can see it's getting a little digitally, a little bit soft around the pixels. 
but if you're not super close to the screen, it's actually kind of handy to have it zoom in that much. Two times zoom on top of its opticals where it still stays pretty sharp. We can even see the little uh, artist mark on this US dime and that little JS there is, you can, I don't, it's barely even visible. It just looks like a little nick on the coin or something. We can see some of the patterns on the, uh, just the scratches on the material. And we, because of our depth of focus, we can actually f get more crisp on the higher sections or uh, down in the depressed area. Here we are looking at some knurling of just a small quarter inch ratchet, which actually seems pretty clean. But we, there's obviously grit in between all the channels. Whoop, well, there it goes. And then what's kind of nice about this is being able to one zoom out here lift this up and just have more space when you want to just take a quick peek at something you can just put it under there and it's actually pretty easy to adjust the focus to where you can just get a nice look at you know in this case this head of this ratchet and then as soon as you get a good focus you can just kind of move the part up and down and get it closer and further away just to get a nice look and surprisingly enough pretty easy to use by hand so anyway sorry about the kind of the long video I was thinking of really how to exemplify one of these things it was a little difficult showing like the TV but nonetheless I think actually this thing's on sale for like 120 bucks uh, I think it's I think they're pretty neat and pretty worthy the battery is actually in the base and you just have to screw on the column and connect. These are these little lights, fortunately, are just USB. So you can actually find all sorts of little USB lights. Uh, if you these uh, kind of ambient ones aren't to your liking, it's interesting. The battery just goes up to the column and then plugs in through a USB C port here. But then they have a, I guess, the data and charging port would be on this side. And then over here is our little uh, HDMI port, and it comes with a 32 gig SD card. So anyway, that's kind of the deal with these things. I mean, it's a metal plate base here, uh, and it is an extruded aluminum column, so it's reasonably rigid. But still, easy to pour, uh, tote around. Also, if you have it on a desk, the screen can tilt. So I thought that was kind of a cool feature. So anyway, and furthermore which apparently it supports some kind of I'm trying to they even talk about this Unilab camera so I suppose it's kind of I haven't don't have a let me try that for a second because I don't know if it will also work as just a USB webcam so anyway to finish it out it does you can plug it right in the computer and just transfer data off it. It'll ask you on the screen whether you want it in camera mode or just mass storage. It limits to two megapixel photos, maybe a different camera app, but the Windows built-in camera just sees it as like a webcam. So it offers you much higher photo resolution and video internally to the device, which kind of makes sense. But other than that, these things People time, oftentimes get the, you know, their little 6-inch ones and little 8-inch screen ones. The bigger deal about like a 10-inch screen one is it gives you enough screen area where that's already giving you like a much bigger view and even zoom just to begin with or magnification. They're easier to see and you tend to get a lot more range being able to focus on something. And you get more pixels the problem with like the little six inch ones is that they're like really low resolution screens and they're you just don't get much detail and so they're de those types of digital microscopes just aren't very satisfying one like this offers more than enough magnification for working on electronics and watches and just so many different things and especially when they're just smaller and more portable like this and when they work well. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.